Well, we're back. That was a bit on, because one, it was not the call I was expecting, and two, um, it's the freaking save game seems like it busted, at least when I've tried to rerun this turn the first time. Now I'm going to try to rerun it second time here. We'll see how it goes, because it looks like the save game was remembering some of the combats, but not all the combats. When I first reran it, now I'm looking at it, everything seems fine. It seems to have remembered all the moves I made, but it has not resolved any of the moves. So, I don't think... Hopefully this works. We'll see. I'm not sure at all if it will or won't. Like I said, this game's a little bit clunky, so we'll see what's going on here. But right now, it looks like at least it's going back to the beginning of the turn resolution, which is what we want, except the screen went black, but the game's still working, so we'll see. Ah, uh, goodness. That's why it's a fun game, but uh, it definitely does not... You know, it, feel, it feels like an indie project. I don't know how indie this game was or wasn't, but uh, I know they put out several games, and they're all a bit clunky. So, we'll shall see here. Okay, things are going. I mean, if you're trying to beat the central powers, I'm just trying to beat the, the game bugs here half the time. Okay, there's that again. We've won, good. That again. Well, this time we didn't get any national morale before. We, I think we had two points of national morale one off this. So that's rough, but oh well. I think the Germans slipped away up there. Whereas before, I think we beat them down last time. So we're going to have to give chase up there. Okay, what's going on? So enemy reinforcements arrive there that we can see. That's rough. Our cohesion is not great. Yeah, exhausted, exhausted, fatigued. Everybody's tired. That's because our cohesion's absolutely in the shitter. But they had guys coming across the river, which is great. They also have cohesion in the shitter. I don't know who's in the shitter worse, us or them, because we barely pulled that one out. We just have more troops. It's cohesion's the issue, not the troop count. Okay. Those guys were fatigued a bit. Most of our guys, some of our guys were fatigued. Most weren't. I think I might need to clear that out. I guess I don't really need to worry if there's a breach there, but. Okay, Serbia is starting to get some cohesion back, the Serbian forces. Yep, they're definitely getting lots of cohesion back. Good. I think I've got two breaches on Konigsberg, so I think we're going to go for the assault next turn, assuming uh, those guys are activated. Whoa, that's a big stack. It's 1100 stack right there. Okay, what 
else do we have going on here? Yep. Po okay, Serbia's reorganizing. That's good. We're getting cohesion back. Okay. Let's see how your promotions went. Okay, you didn't get promoted because you're the highest one. You're good. Four, three, zero. Uh, four, three, zero. Four, three, zero. Five, three, three. may have lost a point here, but like I said, it was safe to promote those guys even if they did lose some points just because we've got Radomir Putnik around who's our got our best stats and Okay. Let's take a look at the reinforcement situation. Serbia needs some more light infantry. You still have some, you still have some. Give up the forces there. If they come in behind me, it's not good, but this is the depot we're just sitting on. Yep, we're hanging in there. Really serve an infantry of was the militia. Let's take a look at this guy. Like this guy's got a rate of fire that's five. I mean, compare that to some of the militia have rate of fire two. I mean, that, that those guys shell out some serious damage. Um. Yep. You just say dug in. Okay, so let's take a look at the overall situation here. We do have research open. We should, oh, we could fund tank research. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'll probably fund aviation. Fund that. And munitions factory. And now let's do fighters again. Have the amount of conscripts I need. I need 52 conscripts. Nope, and I need those for the Serbian guys. So forget that. We are having to do munitions factory right there next to the front lines. Or I'll just go backwards a little bit to Venistra just so we do have some depth in case, God forbid, things go wrong and they declare. Yeah, we don't want you there. You're too close. What are you doing actually? Do we do we supply it for Konigsberg? Let's see, we got two breaches. We're gonna call if of course it's not activated, because what that would be great if you did. Um Huh. It's your combat power. 213. Your 368. Nope. Nope. are hanging out here. Okay, we're just sending that. Force you there via rail. German fleet coming out here. Sieging that. Baltic fleet.
think I'll let you do that. I don't think I want to contest you. So let's take a look at the overall strategic situation for a second before we forget. Uh, France definitely pushing the Germans back now. Look at that. They barely are inside anywhere here. Just Sedan is the only town that looks like they're captured. Verdun's holding strong. And Germany's still holding this town of Ghent. And they've got Bruges. But they don't even hold the the military, the surroundings of Ghent. To take an Antwerp. And it looks like they're having to fall back. Let's check the Austrian front. Austria's being siege at Gorizia. Okay. Looks like they're trying to come in from behind. Could I even make a unit here if I wanted to? No, I can't recruit anywhere in Serbia. So the units I have are the what I'm stuck with. Okay. Yeah, Serbians good quality stuff. I mean, their combat power is a 60, which is basically better than better or equal to pretty much everything I have except for what the Siberians. Um, okay, so we just need to keep getting that cohesion back. Just keep holding on there. On a Houtier. There's two little units hanging out here. You could be stormed. Structure's intact. Eh, I guess we'll hang out there and keep sieging it. Don't particularly need you to go anywhere right now. Brusilov is still out of ammo. That's because you probably got the ammo. Yeah, because you're the one sitting around the depot. Um, hmm. Only one of these guys could attack, so you could get across the river. We did start working on that. Or we could try to force them out here. Got some troops. Of course, we can't see exactly what you've got there. They're in good shape. These two elements are in good shape. He's got a lot of cohesion too, and a lot of Baltic guys. So I think you're going across the river to start seizing that. You're going to stay here and just defend, because your cohesion's got some issues. So we can fix that. And I guess you're good to go on. Nobody else is. So let's do that. Because then we can start going for Budapest in a second here. Can we be sitting there? Um, yeah, let's get some cohesion back. Okay, this is third army. You're at 75% ammo. You're at 27% ammo. Okay, you used to be like zero. So that's good, which means you are getting supplies. So we're going to go ahead and do the munitions before we forget. That's too aggressive. We're going to do it at Venezia. Or Odessa. The reason I like doing it at Odessa is at least it's got a fort. Venezia doesn't. Rana already has a munitions factory. I don't want to put them on the same point, because when I put them on the same point, then I lose that point. I'm going to feel, be feeling like a sad panda. Okay, so we're going to put it in Odessa for now. Not for now. We're going to build it in Odessa. Um, okay, war weariness. Let's check the status of the overall situation. Okay, yeah, we're doing that. We're not going to bother with tank research right now. I just don't think I'll need it, and I don't think I have the war supply to really make them. That's the biggest issue. If I thought I could run them, I would, but I just don't think I can. Russian cavalry needs it. Light infantry is going to need some. 
Oh yeah. We'll do that. Light artillery definitely needs it. Let's see, we're too low on conscripts. Okay, what else do we have options wise? Okay, armies. You nope. You yes. And you got heavy artillery. It's looking like you could just blast these guys. Eight days. Seven days. Synchronize you. Worries me, he's going to show up too early. Six days. Put them all in synchronized, that should be fine. Pimus last words. A lot of hurry there. He's actually got artillery pieces. Interesting. And you ran like a little shit. So you're unlocked. Targeting him. Good. And you. You could probably go all the way in. To here. You train some days ago. Good. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of firepower here. I guess you're gonna try to cross the damn river and go straight into Lublin. You're not unlocked. You've got mm, ammunition's got some issues. Can't lose Lublin. Stop that. You guys are just holding up here because you don't need to go anywhere. Ah, <sighs> damn it. And you know what? We're going to transfer you to here. Because that should hopefully help Renikonf activate, I hope, next turn so then he can go in and assault Konigsberg. Good. You're good. Um, anything else that needs stirring? No. Yeah, see, I've got ammo away from the front lines as part of the issue. Let's check the caucuses. Oh, you're being a pain in the butt going for there. Neither of you guys are activated. Not putting you on the offensive. You're activated. You're activated. Hmm. I'll let you just twist in the wind right there. Oh, that's right. You won that fight. And now you're free. So where do you go? Do you go there? You go to Lublin? I think you go to Lublin. Just encourage them not to mess with Lublin. Or we can send you inside here and you can start raising hell and hungry. I think you can raise hell and hungry. Okay. So you'll be inside. You're good. You're working on that and entrenching. You're good. Because this is a depot when we can take it. Uh, yeah. 
problem is no, he's not going to be able to breach because he doesn't have any artillery, I just realized. Fourth Army. Have you go back and sit on top of that, you should be fine, but I need to have one one of these cores cover. 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 Because we, we just have to have him struggling against munitions. I mean he's got three freaking munitions boxes. And you know what? Because he's got three munitions boxes that just hit me. Take you out. You're gonna route all the way to Moscow. Get munitions. So it'll take quite a while. It's gonna take four turns for him to come back, but there's no way in heck we're gonna be able to fill up a bunch of munitions boxes within here in the meantime. So take a look at the casualty situation and then we'll get the turn rolling. Okay, we're at just over a million casualties. Holy moly. Central Powers is nearly at 3 million. Well, we're at 2.5 on the Western Entente, so I wonder if a whole bunch of guys just surrendered to the Western Allies or something, because that's nuts. So we're clearly doing better. Um, Central Powers at 89 morale, Western Allies 85. That's a bit worrying. I'm at 96. So me need to step up my intensity of the attacks here, but we'll take the save game and start the next turn. Here we go. So as I quietly contemplated to myself the greater mysteries of life, um, it really shows you what in a bad situation I'm in, conscripts-wise, where I can't even raise any more troops. I can't even raise, you know, a fighter squadron. I've just got to, you know, build munitions factories and basically make my artillery that's actually on the field as good as I can. Because, wow. Basically, if we can just get make sure Brusilov gets those damn supplies, we'll be in business. And that was probably my big mistake, was not, one of my mistakes was not routing ammunition boxes back during the winter to get them completely filled to like St. Petersburg or somewhere where there's a lot of supply very far away from the lines and then bring them back. But my next few turns, every time I get war supply, um, I, I won't have enough more supply this next turn probably to build um, to build a munitions factory, but the next turn I should be able to. But we're just going to be pumping everything into replacements and war supply for our artillery, or for ammunition for our artillery. And then we'll see how much Brusilov can get filled up to, because I th think he's literally at flat zero. Uh, munitions because all the munitions went to the other army because he was directly on the depot so that guy got the priority over Brusilov which of course is not what we want because Brusilov's the far better commander but you know we'll probably just keep our territory here I'm gonna take a look at Budapest and see what we can see of Budapest because Budapest is open we'll of course start putting it under siege and trying to take it and he's got these guys under siege but there's no artillery with this army corps here which worries me, of course, because no artillery equals no, basically no breaches. And no breaches equals, we could try to storm it, but we're going to take heavier casualties, so we want to be able to breach it. Konigsberg is fully breached, too. We just need to run and call to freaking activate, and then we can go in and take it. So 
so that will be what we need to do. And man, if Romania could just come in, I mean, look at all this. I guarantee you there's nothing watching this. We could have a Romanian army. Well, they'd have to take out that fort. But after Kronstadt went down, I mean, they'd be just able to walk right in. Hmm. Because I don't think these cities are worth much. I don't think they have any uh, territorial bonuses or anything. I mean, this one's likely a depot because there's a fort there. This is Cluj is a uh, depot. We saw that. But we've got the depot here at uh, Dobrezin, which is what we're using. That's why we sent uh, Brusilov back there. Start pulling some ammo out of it. But we'll see how much it really gets through. Because we're keeping a you know a good amount of rail capacity open, so we are moving the maximum amount of ammunition that we can. We're not constraining it like we were doing previously on some of our turns. But I'm just glad the damn save game didn't break. Although I think we did lose out on getting two national morale on the, one of those fights when we reran it, because when you rerun the battles, they can turn out differently. That's why I like trying to show the battles on stream, or not stream, on the video here, so you know I'm not rerunning it, fishing for better results. Even though at least downtime like this, you know, we pontificate, we look at the situation, and frankly, if you don't like it, you can just, you know, speed up until the turn keeps going again. You know, with your, uh, with your playback cursor there. Um, because we should be trying to get across there, and we're going to be trying to get across here. So we can threaten and cut these lines. That will be cut to Chemazil. But it just takes it takes so much because we'd have to come all the way up to here to totally cut off, I think, Krakow and Chemazil. And I just don't see that happening, at least right now. We would need to take Budapest and we need to make sure that when they're pulling troops out of Serbia, they don't come and like cut our lines. Because as you've heard me say, I like to have double rail lines because, we, of course, you have a single rail line. They cut the link of one place, you're done. Uh, if you've got the double rail line, like if we can get this one, you know, attached here, then, you know, they could come up and accidentally cut this. Doesn't matter. We've got the second line coming through. Well, same thing applies to Budapest. Of course, we're shifting some troops to threaten Budapest here. But, you know, this is one long line. They can cut any link. There goes our ammo. So if we can get, you know... Budapest, and then establish this other line here. I mean, we basically need to get this line hooked up for starters, so then we've got a double line, but this will be a second double line once Budapest is taken. So, that is the overall situation. Um, the running comp, I'm sure, is the wrong person. We wanted to try to take uh, Konigsberg just because his, act, his chances of activation are so low, because I think he's got a strategic rating of 1, which is absolutely atrocious, but the other problem is I don't think any of our core commanders have really been promoting up or have the experience to promote up because they need to be winning fights and we've won, actually we've won a decent amount of fights, but I don't know if those, you know, it's just considering the army generals as the ones that are actually leaning against the core commanders. So maybe they're the ones getting the experience, not the core commanders. I'm not exactly sure. Although that probably should not be correct, because thinking about it, if we look at the Serbian front, all those guys were down there, although those weren't cores, those were independent stacks that were fighting under um, Vladimir Putnik. So, uh, we shall see. We shall see what happens there. It's still... Gonna be what early August going into late August, I think. So we've got plenty of time to continue to push. And the other good news is we're over the Carpathians. So when it's well, when it hits winter, it'll probably still be snowy here and harsh weather, and it'll stop us from pushing. But at least we won't be trying to get through the the mountain passes, which we just you know could not do last time. So we decided to just sit up and wait. So. 
So, but yeah, that that conscript situation is just horrible and kind of scaring me because we're definitely going to be running low and we're definitely going to run out eventually. Like I said, we need to focus on the chits, and once you add a replacement chits, that's what actually matters. You know, it's not the conscripts in the bank. If I had, you know, tons and tons of reinforcement shits, I'd feel better. Um, we have pre-bought a lot, so that is good. Um, and, of course, we'll be getting conscripts every turn, but not a whole lot. I think you get most of your conscripts at the beginning of the year. And so, because we get them at the beginning of the year, we still have half a year off from that, so... That's that's going to take some serious time. Really is. <laughs> thinking, thinking, thinking. Yeah, because, I mean, until we can get some army... Core commanders to promote. I mean, we're stuck with Samsonov. We're stuck with a lot of those three star generals that are just god awful. Not that the Russian core commanders are much better, but they are better. And someone like Pavel Renikov is like, he's what, like a 1 1 0? Or, I mean, he's, his stats are just not, not great. They're just not great. He needs to replace, and he is my first to replace. Samsonov will probably be second, but Renikov needs to go first. thousand percent and if we can hit a point where things cool down or we take out austria maybe i would probably look into promoting brusilov off to overall command just because he is my commander with the best strategic rating so even if he gets knocked a point or so in some of his columns he's still better than grand duke uh, nikolai nikolaevich who's what a 3-1-1 i think Brucey loves what a five four one five four two right now. So we've got the supply calculating. This should be going here shortly. They're so bringing up some heavy artillery in Poland. They being the Germans. Vladimir Putnik's gaining back cohesion. That's good. Yeah, they'll be ready to take another attack. The good news is I still have reinforcements with the Serbs. I mean, those chits, I mean, the mountain ones, mountain units are the only ones we keep kind of running out of, and I just keep barely putting them back in. So my replacement situation is okay. The conscripts is not good. There we go. Putnik's really reorganizing. Great. Okay, looking at this. It's kind of hard to tell which way they're moving troops sometimes, just because they show, hey, this unit's here, but it's a little hard to see. Oh, are you falling back? Are you moving forward? Man, yeah, Serbia's still hanging on. There we go. Klausenberg's there. You're trying to sneak around me, though. So maybe you'll have to go here and watch that while you guys assault. Yeah. 32 power, 25 power. That's an assault happening. Um, oh, we got some damn Austrians behind us. That's cute. Okay, he's still at 34% artillery. I mean, this is the depot. Oh, is it because that son of a bitch is on the supply line? Maybe. Okay, you need to keep conquering that. It's disputed ownership. You need conquering that. It's disputed ownership. And 
you know what? I think you're going to start with, what, I think that used to be the 5th Army. Yeah, 5th Army here. I think you're going to start moving in. And you're going to go here with some rail. Let's see, because we can see. Okay, here we are. In range. Oh, did they repair? Holy shit, I think they repaired it. Damn. Think on this for a second. And let's look at the overall situation for starters. Okay, objectives. Central power is still just under 3 million, up to 90, 86. I'm at 95. Okay. See how close things are like the United States coming in. Okay, Greece should be coming in. Oh, wait, no, Greece already is in what I'm saying. Okay. So both of them are working on it. I think they're canceling it out. Pro Entente, U.S. is always moving forward. Okay. Only at 33%, though. Munitions aid. Economic aid. Not there yet. How close to rebels are we? We're at 85%, 85, 85. Central powers are actually doing way better regarding the rebel situation. Okay, looking at our stats here. Yeah, central powers have the lead when it comes to aircraft by far. We've actually got the lead when it comes to small small arms infantry. Um, hmm. Got a bunch of units here, but yeah, one two zero. Come on, Rankov. Think, think, think. Okay. I haven't tried to cross there. Is this guy going to make it out? Targeting. You're open. Nope. You're not going there. Okay. I think we start forcing through this pass too to force him back. You're assaulting. You've got to go there and knock them the hell out. Okay, I have the screw of the rail line here, and then you're open. 43% ammo, good enough. You're open, you're open. Of course, I want to say whether they're open or not, I mean, are they activated or not, but... I guess he'll go, but I don't want him targeting. I want him to actually take the territory. Synchronize you guys so you go and hopefully smack him. 
well and good. And you know what? Keep advancing. Because here's the thing. They've set up across the river for me. But if I come in behind them, hey, no river crossing. So... So you need to keep working on taking that. You need to keep working on taking that. I've got two cores here. I'm going to be careful. Make sure he doesn't manage to ram through me right there. Bothers me though that Bruce Ulov didn't get anything, so I'll put him on double pass, which means he's the priority. Got to keep these lines open. And I think that's a stupid important call I have to take, so I'm going to clip the video here, and I'll see you next time.